Welcome to episode four of John and Lauren's Semi-Sick. Sick, yeah. Lifetime, Lifetime Christmas, Christmas movie, movie review. Tonight's episode was Holiday in Santa Fe. Yeah. Starring Mario Lopez. Yeah. Known as AC Slater. Yeah. To the younger millennial older millennial crowd and the description is siblings tony and magdalena run a family-owned business that makes holiday decor inspired by mexican christmas traditions an executive at a large greeting card chain sees an opportunity to acquire them mm -hmm. so it was good it was it was really good, actually. Yeah. Um, I kind of was paying more attention to it because uh, one of the things that I'm doing at my job currently is we're researching Santa Fe for one of the things that we're presenting there. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of interesting because I'm literally researching it right now. And so we got to see lots of clips of the actual town. And it mentioned a lot of what I had already read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay, so so it was it was different than the normal ones because it actually seemed like it had two plot lines going on. You had the normal romance plot, and then there was a, a side plot with the sister and yes. her coming of I not really coming of age, but growth com coming of business age. I guess I'd mm, call it not even business age. I think yeah, more was, of like. Getting over grief, too? Mm, a little bit. There's always a death in the Lifetime Christmas movies, of course. Yeah. And so, it obviously, it focuses on, uh, I don't even know his name, A.C. Slater's family. Yeah. Who run a very small, I would say. Yeah. Um, shop of Christmas decor and basically a Hallmark type corporation. That's what I kept thinking the whole time. It's Hallmark. Yeah, it was it was like a little arts it was like an art studio art shop that they were you know, they sold handmade Christmas ornaments and decorations and things like that. So it seemed very like studio esque where it was like the storefront of a studio. Right. So they had their own, um, like, glass blowing stuff and... And they made, like... studio in the back. Metal hearts could... and all sorts of stuff. That is what the yeah. mom had done. And Hallmark wants to buy them out. Yeah, this com the greeting card company wants to buy them out. Provides an offer. Which is apparently was really, really good and everything. However, mm -hmm. it was the mother who had recently-ish past uh mm -hmm. it was her like dream and i guess in the past they had offered well, her they, it, her dream wasn't to get bought out by the no she her had... dream was to run the the shop it was like even named after her yeah. um she had turned them down in the past mm -hmm. but the ac slater had called the company because i don't know why because he said they would maybe last one to two more years if they didn't sell out what if yeah, so they good? Were, well, I think it was because the the sister wasn't making any new things, That's so right. they were running out of it. Like they were selling all of mom's old designs and stuff, and people were getting tired of it. But I guess. yeah, you can only do that for so long without coming up with something new to right. drive more traffic. And the sister was an artist or is an artist, and I guess she's from CSI. Uh, no, she was uh, the she was the CSI forensic analysis girl from Dexter and Lucifer. Oh, okay. But um, anyways, um, but yeah. So she she was like she was. Her, a, I think she was a really good character. Her her main conflict was throughout the whole thing was that she was designing this uh this piece in tribute to her mom for the Christmas. Uh, festival festival winter winter fest or whatever it was called and they so she was having a hard time finding inspiration for that and that was the struggle for her character throughout the movie is dealing with this buyout which she was not on board with and right. then coming up with this design that's going to pay tribute to her mom 
and you know make herself worthy as an artist and good enough and all that to keep mm -hmm. the family business afloat so it kind of all rested on her shoulders one thing i really liked about her is that she had a lot of emotional depth like she was kind of a mess mm -hmm. and i i found her very relatable in that sense yeah the one thing that i found weird about this was that the uh like the relationship angle seemed shoehorned in so like Slater calls the lady and has her come out and do the tour of, of their facilities and everything. And, like, from the, the minute she touches down, he's, like, treating this like, hey, you're, you know, what's going on, hot stuff? Let's, you know, have ourselves a date here yeah. and a date there. And it was like, what is even happening here? Like, how is he just immediately going into date mode? Because she was hot. She kind of looked like, again, you may not think so. She kind of looked like a Kim Kardashian again. Mm. Mm. Um, and it was kind of interesting. And like, I pointed this out because I thought it was ridiculous. So she was like, oh, I packed light because she thought mm -hmm. she was only going to stay for two days. And she ended up staying for five. However, she had three different pairs of shoes, two of which were boots, one knee high boots, like three different winter coats and a plethora of outfits. So she was only staying for two days. And she even said, I packed light. Mm -hmm. Well, she did apparently buy a dress for their first actual date a red dress where the uh that was one of the funnier moments the the waiter knows slater because and was like and they're they're talking about things and he's like oh yeah i've got i've got a dinner meeting coming up so we need one more place at my usual table and then she shows up and they both turn and look and they're all jaws drop and, they're and like, go. Aye, aye, aye. And they both say in unison, you look fantastic or something like that. Yeah, it was kind of gross. And then the waiter was like, oh, wait, I mean, your table's this way. And it was like, oh, okay. And ha, then ha, ha. they gave the margaritas on the house and they mentioned that Santa Fe is known for its margarita trail, which apparently there's 40 to 45 different restaurants that serve a different signature margarita. I would like to try that. Mm -hmm. um, I would pass on that, but. And it showed a lot of the, you know, Pueblo style architecture, which I think is really cute. And so anyways, back to the movie. Yep. Okay. So the, what should we call, what was the girl's name? The CSI girl. Magdalena. No, that was, a, that was a sister. Yeah, that that's Oh sorry, sorry. Um the the buyer girl. Uh crap. Esmeralda no, no 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 Belinda Belinda. Belinda. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Belinda she, yeah. um comes into town and she wants to make this deal because she'll get this big promotion and her mm. sidekick reminded us both of this YouTuber that we like to follow whose name is Arvin Alano. And just his persona and everything. But anyway, so mm -hmm. they really want to get the promotion because then they can, you know, obviously make, make more money and everything, but also get two weeks in Cabo and hot yoga and all this jazz. Yeah, they make a running joke about how executives have access to the executive suite in Cabo and it comes hot with yoga. hot yoga. And they're just making all this weird jokes about it throughout the whole movie. Yeah, and it was also kind of funny because when he asked, when uh, Slater asked her out, she was like, oh, I was just going to go back to my hotel room and watch, watch Felice Navi Dad because that was his Lifetime movie from last year. And I thought that was funny. Well, a couple years ago. A couple yeah. years ago. Um, yeah, that... But anyways. So, yeah, they, they do the whole courting thing where he's she's trying to convince him to buy... Or to sell, sell, and he's just trying to butter her up, I butter guess. Butter her up and also convince his family that they should mm -hmm. sell. And, you know, there's, so there's a sister, the sister's daughter, and the grandpa. And they're all, they're cute little characters, and they're all yeah. right. So they do a lot of just datey stuff. They go rollerblade, or roller skating, at one point. And they kiss. They, they do. Yeah, they did kiss after he basically, she was going to fall and he basically caught her and picked her up and basically landed in her chest. With and his then face. 
yeah, face first in her chest and then was like, oh, I guess this is the appropriate time to kiss. Uh-huh. But it's true. They, they, did, uh, they did all sorts of little datey stuff. They, it was really he took them around. Cute. He took him around, her, took her around the town, and they did. Uh, Hung out with the family a bunch. They chucked ham. ham. She <laughs> won the ham chucking contest, and yeah, they had uh, chili pepper contest. Spice off contest, I guess. They only had two. where they just eat peppers one on one, and yeah. whoever can eat the hotter pepper wins. Yep, but. Uh, yeah, so they do a lot of that stuff, and then he drops the bomb on her that he doesn't want to sell the company. He wants a partnership mm-hmm. with his sister running designs, uh, yeah. and she's like, "Oh well, I don't know." And he's like, "Yeah, I mailed you the detail, emailed you the details, and if you do it and get your, you know, you can." Do the stuff here and save 30% business talk. And then sends it to her and she tries to get a hold of her boss because it's, you know, Christmas Christmas. or two days before Christmas, whatever. And he's on vacation or whatever. And so I guess he doesn't read it or whatever. And so Slater's like, what? What do you mean they didn't go for Mm -hmm. it? You didn't even present it. And instead of her saying, actually, I did, she just, of course, stares at him. Yeah, it was the conflict was that she learned that they were going to take (gasps) the name of the of the family and make these ridiculously racist stereotypical stereotypical, like Mexican. Like they had one that was like uh mariachi santa holding a taco with and a wine pinata. and a pinata and like the, another one was a like a card that said like let's taco about Navidad. Navidad. it was actually a um like cuckoo clock or whatever and every time yeah. santa would pop out and say let's taco about Navidad. And, and so just weird stuff like that yeah so she showed him that stuff and was basically like uh don't take the deal. This is ridiculous. This They're is gonna what's drag your name through the mud, and so he's like, oh, "I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that." And they get into a fight because he was like, "Oh, well, you didn't even try to pitch our idea to the guy or to the executive and whatever." And she, and she just yeah, stood there with her mouth open and didn't she say was just like, uh, "I don't know." Yeah, but then she. Calls the boss who's pissed because nobody calls me on vacation. I only take one week a year and it's the week of Christmas. And convinces him yeah, convinces on Christmas him. Eve to leave his family, well, I'm assuming family, vacation to come to Santa Fe to see this art exhibit. Yeah, the, the Winterfest unveiling in tribute to. And mom. so what it was is. His sister was glass blowing like balls, like large ornaments, but like the wish balls, you know, that you put in your yard and everything, which I mean, I have one there. Well, those, those weren't, that's kind of the style, but she was going for like a large Christmas ornament. Like they were, they're the wish wish balls. balls, but in a Christmas ornament style. So you could hang it off of a large tree. Kind of, like yeah. You'd, they were more geared towards, like, if you were to have an outdoor Christmas tree that was, like, you know, a 20-foot Christmas tree that you're sticking, you know, huge ornaments in, you could probably do that. But um, the buyer girl was like, oh, my God, these are so unique and da-da-da. And I'm thinking, hmm. But that was what the sister promoted, and everyone was like, oh, my God, this is amazing, la, la, la. But she did hang it in this clay-painted tree of life that was a tribute to her mother mm-hmm. and all that. And so everyone was like, oh, this is amazing, blah, 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 blah. And one of the growth moments, though, because she was like, I'm not before this. She was like, I'm not good enough. You know, my mom was the artist. My grandma was the artist. I'm whatever. And then her daughter had framed a handwritten note from her mom, which I thought was a really good idea, actually. Yeah. And it said, like, um, in Spanish, it was that that little poem thing where it was like, um, the bird wasn't scared to be on the branch or whatever, to sit on the tree because it wasn't 
worried the branch was going to break because it didn't have faith in its own wings or, you yeah. know, that, whatever that thing is. And so the girl was like, oh, you're right, mom. Like, thank you. And I'm going to have faith in myself. And she created the tree balls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked, it was, it, it was a good, like, it was a funny, weird ending because it was kind of, um, Christmas vacation y, but in a positive way where the guy just appears at, at the end was like, oh, sorry I didn't get here sooner, but I saw everything and we're going to give you a deal and you a deal and you get the job and you get the job and you get a promotion. And we're partnering with and, you yeah. and we're going to have all of our stuff created in Santa Fe now because it's yeah, 30% off the to edition, ship. All your first editions will come from here and. And then he just, he's like, all right, see you next year. And he leaves. And, you know, that's basically it. They're, they all make up. They're all, yay, happily ever, ever, happily ever after. However, the girl lives in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, I'm going to go to Chicago for New Year's Eve and spend a week there. And then she was like, okay, well, next year when I come to Santa Fe. And I thought that was kind of really good. I don't know if their relationship will last because, you know, they live across the country. But I thought it was kind of nice because... It wasn't the cookie cutter, oh, I'm going to move here and live with you yeah. and all that. Or you're going to move with me. It was like, okay, we're going to date or or whatever. It didn't say be exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of implied, obviously. But it was just like, oh, you know, you're going to visit me and I'll visit you next year. It is what it is, man. Yeah. So what would you rate it? A rating time? All right. I'm going to defer to you first. No, I want to I have first. a ballpark idea. All right, go. You first. No, you got to go no, first. No, you first. Because I first. have mine. It's not going to change. So then it would be perfect for you to go first. All right. So I don't know. Maybe it's just because, you know, again, I was just researching Santa Fe, so I'm kind of in that mode. But I'm going to give it. You're going to be shocked. Go ahead and say. I'm going to give it an 8.78. That's a very specific number. Yeah. Okay, we're we're in a similar boat. I'm gonna give it a nine. Ah! It was it was a really good movie. It, it, was. it wasn't. It it had cookie cutter moments, but it kept me on my toes. I, I it wasn't as predictable as I thought, and it was in. For once, I feel like it was cool to see a Christmas movie that took place in like Not a snowy. southern non snowy region with less stereotypical environments i can agree with that it was yeah. cool it was it was cool and i feel like well of course there was like the bullshit like of course of course they got the what they wanted and the mm -hmm. business and all that but everything else was pretty relatable yeah it was pretty cool was even the um the assistant the YouTuber Arvin Alano lookalike was like, okay, guys, this is getting to be like a rom com. And I was yeah, like, they, they they made a, yeah, they made fun of itself. Yeah, they did make fun of itself a couple of times. Which I kind of liked. All but right. We recommend yeah. Holiday in I mean, Santa Fe. All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.